we need to uh, streamline whenever we're starting with a website project is identifying who are the stakeholders that we need to listen to, who are the stakeholders which are actually the key decision makers when it comes to the website. Because yes, the sales will be involved, the marketing, the finance, the ops, everyone will have an opinion on it. But at the end of the day, who is the person or who, who, who are the core people within a team who will actually be making the decisions for us? <music> We're back, everybody. Quick Fire Marketing, another episode with my very special guest, Hanan, anime lover and website extraordinaire. Hanan, tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you so much for having me, E.T. So I have an agency. It's called Digital Rift Agency. We specialize in website development, design, and all things UI, UX, video, graphical, animation, etc. And we are part of the EMA lines. Thank you, Hanan, for joining us today. We're focusing on websites. Why? Because everyone feels like their website's never good enough. So thanks for joining us. You know, getting into it. Website optimization. It's. I feel like websites are something that are constantly tuned and tinkered with. And it's also an area that all teams, whether they interact with it daily or not have an opinion of. It could even be like the finance person that's hidden in a hole somewhere or your engineer or your sales team. They all have an opinion of how your website looks when they get to it. How do you manage that when you work with teams? So yeah, first of all, absolutely. Websites are an easy target and they're always in the line of fire. And they are also the biggest and most prominent real estate asset that any company has, whether that's e-commerce store or a B2B tech startup or just a blogger, anyone. That's your storefront. So obviously everyone's going to have an opinion about it and everyone's going to have all eyes on it. The challenge that you have is how to take care of all the stakeholders involved and the very first part that we need to uh, streamline whenever we're starting with the website project is identifying who are the stakeholders that we need to listen to, who are the stakeholders which are actually the key decision makers when it comes to the website. Because yes, the sales will be involved, the marketing, the finance, the ops, everyone will have an opinion on it. But at the end of the day, who is the person or who, who who are the core people within a team who will actually be making the decisions for us. This has happened when you're starting off with the project, the CEO is pretty busy and it's a lot of hard work and the CEO doesn't want to be involved with that. And they decide that I give full autonomy and authority to this so-and-so person. And at the very end, right when you're about to launch, they're like, okay, yeah, oh, we need to change this, change that. So that's very important that we don't run into such issues. And the only way to do that is to include all the decision makers, identify them and include them. Even if they say that at the end of the day, we don't want to be that much involved, we need to involve them. Yeah, hundred percent. And then when you start doing your optimizations, what are some need to have versus some like we'd like to have these things? So website optimization is a very large topic and it touches upon almost all aspects of your marketing. There are four basic types of website optimizations that we usually follow. Number one is obviously your SEO optimization, which includes your technical optimization, your on-page and your off-page optimization. Each one of these topics could have a podcast uh -huh. of their own. They're so deep. And uh, then you have the UX optimization and then you have the content optimization. And uh, then obviously you optimize for your mobile experience. So we'll start off a little bit about the most important optimizations, uh, which is your technical optimization. With SEO on page, you have the meta tags and the descriptions and everything, and that's something that you usually have covered and it's easier to do. Technical optimization has a direct impact on your rankings, has a direct impact on your user experience, has a direct impact on whether you get those conversions or not. And all of this comes together and creates the CRO, mm -hmm. which is your conversion rate optimization, which is an all-encompassing topic, which includes all of these. So you start off with technical optimization. That is a need to have. You cannot have a slow website. You cannot have a website which is ranking really bad on Google Lighthouse scores. You can't have a lag on your website. And another thing to take care of when you're looking at technical optimization is you might have a score which is hitting the 90s on desktop, but you've used plugins which are breaking the user experience. So these are some things 
you need to take care about while doing technical optimization. Then I would say your mobile optimization is very, very important. Google actually penalizes you if your website is not optimized for mobile. And what that basically means when they say mobile first is your images need to be compressed. Your images need to be resized. Your images should not be going haywire on the mobile screen. Mm -hmm. You have a beautiful website and desktop, but on mobile, your whole experience just kind of crashes down. So just like you design a page for your desktop, you need to have a similar page design designed for your mobile as well. And then you have the good to have experiences. A user trend or behavior that is coming on the horizon that even myself as a casual website person I'm not aware of that I should be looking to experience. So the basics of SEO optimization remain the same. You need to have the keywords and everything. One new thing that is coming up with the advent of AI, machine learning, deep learning, all that is being uh, integrated into the Google score system and Google algorithm is becoming more and more mm -hmm. intelligent. So what that does is it is looking more towards the user intent data. So for example, you're running a query that you're looking for something. And if the content used to be that the content has to feature certain keywords, but now the context has been attached to it, the intent purpose has been attached to it. So now you're going to have to be more careful when you're optimizing for your keywords. Your strategy needs to change from just bombarding keyword data to more towards what is the user searching for? Is there a certain need or is there a certain pain point that they're trying to solve with that keyword? And you're going to have to adapt to that. That's number one. So your user intent, your long term tail keyword strategy has to change. It has to become more complex. Number two is the use of 3D when it comes to UX. Everyone started to jump on board with the 3D uh, elements. Uh, a while back, we saw that with NFTs. It started with 3Ds plus a dark background. But dark background was kind of like a fad. It comes in one year, it's in one year, then it goes away the other year. But the 3D is the next thing that whenever you want to impress people or show that, yeah, we're a company which has put thought into the website design and uh, you want to all your audiences capture them, you go with the 3D design. May that be with just incorporating small 3D elements just to keep people captivated or, you know, having a whole experiential website, which kind of like delves you into a 3D world and you go from one place to another. And obviously, I think everyone knows this by now, but videos, more and more people want to consume videos. The latest trend is for the blogs to have like a small snippet, small videos, just to capture the summary, people don't want to read. People just want to be given a small executive summary of what it is. Not long form videos, just short form videos. Okay, so we got 3D elements, videos. You know, on one end, those are all amazing things. Super shiny objects. I love them. On the business side, which ones, maybe not even listed on that, have the shortest time to value? Like, what are good ones that a growing company could leverage and it doesn't take too long? So one thing, I wouldn't say it's a quick win. I would say it's easy to execute and it keeps on adding value throughout your life cycle is something to do with content marketing optimization. So you need to really take a look at your content. Everyone has so far realized that we need to have a content mm -hmm. hub where you get more keywords in and everything. But now what people are realizing is you need to go a step further once you upload a content, you need to write news articles about that content. You need to create more content from that one piece of content. You need to amplify that, oh, we've created a content and you need to have uh, Instagram post or LinkedIn post or whatever uh, relevant platform that you're uh, functioning on. And then you need to make other people talk about it and kind of like become an authority, thought leadership within your industry. And that strategy has worked out quite well for some companies that, you know, they were losing traffic on certain blogs. They gained a lot of followers in one year and then it became stale. But when they refresh the content with a new perspective, that really helps. All right. Thanks for joining the episode. You can find us wherever podcasts are found, you know, hit us up, talk about B2B marketing as usual. We're happy to chat.